the Lord. Let's lift our hands to heaven and bless the Lord for tonight. We receive, we partake. Pray in other tongues as we declare your expectation inside and outside. Lift your voice and express your desperation. chapter 2 from verse 2 says from verse 1 and 2 he says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet he said the spirit entered not just the preaching the spirit entered me when he told the prophet stand up he said he didn't have any strength and he said when he spoke to me that word came with a spirit and agency I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, let your word lift me out of this challenge, out of this Please pray, pray. When you seek God with all your heart, you will find it. Pray. And the Spirit entered into my finance. And the Spirit entered into my health situation. And the Spirit entered into me. And the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. The Bible says the entrance of thy word is a life and understanding to the people. Praying, don't stop. Keep praying, don't stop. Let it be a true desire from your heart. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want. Fill my cup. It's not a special number. The bread of heaven. Just lift your hands and thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you. You are mighty. Lord, we are expecting tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again, I want to encourage us that every time we come into His presence, your attitude, your attitude, your attitude is very important when it comes to receiving from God. You can come in casually and carelessly just come in to greet people and look around and see faces or you can come with a desperation that nothing can distract you see when you come into god's presence your attitude you must come as though you are ready and willing to receive hallelujah we declare your majesty Come be see We declare Oh
that in the name of Jesus, this place is open for you. Find a pressure. May we enjoy the fresh wind of the Spirit. In this season, when you are preaching and separating men unto honor, find vessels unto honor, O oh God. Find men and riches for the purpose of the kingdom. We declare that from the ends of the earth, you alone are the power. We declare that Jesus alone is glorified in our wisdom. Raise ordinary people to the mighty. It is by your majesty. It is by your sovereignty. You are the mighty man. No one voted you into power. No political party can impeach you. that you don't trivialize this part of the teaching of the word because there is a level of intercourse that happens a level of intercourse that happens when we worship when you are alone with God though in a congregation and a crowd like this but worship separates you and the Holy Spirit begins to minister to your needs I declare, I 
give us a visitation tonight. Let this not be one of those services, oh God. Let burdens be lifted. Let mindsets be changed. Let mantles and graces and anointing fall upon your people. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated quietly. Just pick up your Bible. Mm. The presence of God is mighty. My secret place, my secret place. 
my secret place is an overflow of my secret place. Your majesty, I will go on and on, I will go on and on, bringing you the worship you deserve. And I will go on and on. Yes, God, I You deserve my worship. I will go on and on. And on and on. Brothers and sisters, I'm teaching you how to dig into ancient fountains of power. This is how to dig into the wells of grace. This is how to dig into the wells of freshness in the spirit. His majesty. <laughs> hey! His majesty. Don't think I'm wasting your time. Your majesty. Your majesty. This is how the songs come in the spirit. Melodies that were not composed, falling like the dew of heaven. May he put his song in your mouth. He says, You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. Many will see and hear and put their trust in him. I tell you, I can go on and on. If this is all I do tonight, it's worth it for my king. Because as I sing, then he steps into my life. Then he steps into my situation. Then he steps into my finances. I authorize him through my worship. I attract him as I invoke his presence in worship. Make your I lift him above my challenges. When I worship him, I must invite him. Let me tell you something. What I'm teaching you tonight, what you are doing, is an ancient mystery. It's how mighty men tap into deep fountains of power. You may not, some of you may think we are just wasting time. I'm sharing with you a piece of my secret place. Ancient fountain, I tell you. If, if you keep going like this, you stretch. 
stretch it one hour, two hours, you will touch a fountain in the spirit that everyone will know you touch something. The problem is we don't stay long enough. Every time his presence starts coming, flesh starts telling us time is going. When you bring time into the equation, you ruin his presence because it's eternity invading time. He does not come into your, your presence on your time. He comes in on his time. That's where we miss it. We don't stay long enough until the glory rubs up on us. When the glory comes, flesh starts distracting us. And we think we are wasting time because we do not know what happens when we worship. He fights your battles. Your worship is a language. It lifts up your pain before God. It lifts up your challenges before God. Your worship is a language. It lifts up your request before God. You don't need to mention it. Don't let the devil say you must mention it. No. It's an ancient mystery. It's a mystery of prayer and supplication. You sing out your pain. You sing out your tear. You sing out your mountain. And as you sing them, those mountains collide with his majesty. They collide with power. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Let it. Let it. It's your majesty. When God releases his glory upon the people, don't be too quick to allow the glory leave. It's your majesty. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your manifested presence. sit down if you can the seat is not comfortable just take whatever position God is already doing a lot of things let me tell you there is a heavy spirit of prophecy in this place heavy spirit of prophecy that's why I kept singing because I began to sense I began to sense the spirit of prophecy and, and we must sing it to come oh let it come let it come oh God let it come is the mystery with which we will know what predates our age. We will not stop it. Let it come. We need to be made mighty men and women. Let it come. Let it come. Let the spirit of prophecy let it fall upon us. In and out and everywhere, let the spirit of prophecy fall. Open our eyes, so God. So God, so God. Open our ears to hear the shofar of the spirit. Your majesty. 
to something. Listen, the presence of God is, is always around. But there are certain times your worship touches a dimension of Him. You must be helped and please. You must be sensitive enough to know when it comes in. We are not a religious people. If this is all we do tonight, because there are men who came here hungry, there are times God just brings in a level of grace. Both of you lift your hands. Lift your hands, both of you. Take it down in the name of Jesus. Shake Allah. This is how you become mighty. You must learn to be sensitive. Don't get too organized that you do not know when God steps in. Don't get too mechanical. He knows you need to be healed. He knows you need Rema. But let me tell you, when it comes, He upgrades you. He upgrades you in the spirit. What is happening to us is a promotion in the spirit. It's how God increases the ranking of men in the spirit. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Let us pray in tongues for a while. Come on, men of prayer. Where you are, just begin to pray. So that that which you have received will sink into your mind. Activate that which you have received. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the weight of your presence. Increase the weight of your glory upon our lives. We want to be end of your power. End 
This is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. It's not the name of a meeting. It's an experience. It's not a Sunday worship service. This is Koinonia. All the men you see and admire, both are on and in this ministry. This is how they were trained. This is how they were built. It's a spiritual drilling that will make you mighty. It's a spiritual drilling that will open you up to fountains of grace. This is how your prayer for power will be answered. This is prayer for spiritual influence will be answered. Just worship for more. Don't be tired. Obadiah Obadiah chapter 1 You are catching fire tonight Obadiah 1 verse 21 And Saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And as a result of their ministry, the kingdom shall be the Lord. It says, Saviors shall come out. Saviors. This strange pursuit of men and women. This strange dimension of being. Ordinary men doing the works of God. Men who are not limited by anything. They have sustained a strategy in the spirit that keeps them victorious in the earth realm. He said, but time will not fail me to talk about Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdue kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions, He said, women who receive their death back to life. You are writing your own history. Your sacrifice is giving you access to touch what the ancient touched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, Koinonia is, is a collection of all kinds of people. And God does not want to live anyone's life to chance. Some of you watching me, you will be the ones doing what I'm doing one day. You see that? So God is preparing you. If, except you don't want the anointing except you want to join the bands of liars and noisemakers 
But if it is true grace you want, there is no shortcut to it. I'm telling you, this is how it happens. This is how it happens. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Don't worry, just leave all those you can't sit. Just find somewhere. Sit on the floor. Just do whatever you want to do. Let me just establish a few things and then we will close. I come against everything. I come against every force and every foul spirit. I know what I'm seeing in the spirit. I come against every spirit. I come against every spirit. I come against every spirit. I change every prophecy that lingers upon the head of anyone that is not of God. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood in the name that is above all names. I declare that the enchantment of men, the wickedness of men, the scorching tongues, men who are sworn by the sky, sworn by the stars and the constellations to manipulate the destinies of men, I bring into alignment in the name of Jesus. I speak by an apostolic voice tonight. I challenge the constellations and I command them to release the destinies of men. Of the order of the heavens, I command in the name of Jesus that every arrangement that has been drawn and has been as the result of that bringing men into failure, poverty, spiritual powerlessness, I challenge those powers from the second heaven. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I open those gates, I open those doors, I open those doors. I mentioned in the name of Jesus, that have been manipulated, visions that have been corrupted, experiences that have been aberrated. I bring purity to your dreams, to your vision, to your spiritual experience. In the name of God. Please be seated. Oh, shit. Just be sensitive to what God is doing. It will be for a few minutes and we'll round up. There may not be room to do any serious teaching because I began to sense this right from home. I began to sense that it was tonight was a time of activation just activation and let me tell you it is very important for a ministry that as we begin to teach have miracle services there are services that are special impartation services this is one of such just impartations raw impartations of the spirit it is part of the ministry of the world Look, you need grace. I'm telling you, you need it. You need the anointing. I said it last week, the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing is the difference between failure and success. The anointing is the difference between your current CGPA and where you need to get to. The anointing is it. You will struggle for nothing but the anointing. So don't you think what is happening is just power to heal the sick? The anointing is the difference between you and that joblessness. The anointing. When the principles have been taught and you understand the principles, when your obedience has been perfected, you need an agency that forces compliance in the spirit. The name of that agency is the anointing. We live in a wicked world where there are all kinds of assaults of darkness. It is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies will submit themselves. Recurrent sicknesses, it comes and goes, comes and goes. Brother, you need the anointing. 
I tell you, all kinds of manipulation of darkness in the dream. Eating all kinds of nonsense. Hearing all kinds of sounds. The anointing does not make the difference. It is. Please learn this. It is the difference. It is the difference. You can do ministry. Listen to men of God and get their tapes and copy what they are saying. You will never see the result until you pass through this process. It is the anointing that gives life to your words. It's not about speaking. It's not just about rema. You can share what somebody said. You can get a koinonia message. Preach word for word. It will not produce the effect. Because the anointing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about his academic he went about the business he went about the ministry the anointing is what will separate you marriage will not just come because you are beautiful no 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 the anointing it says because of the ointment to the virgins love thee because of the ointment not because of your looks sons of Solomon he said because of the ointment there is an aura Esther began to anoint herself with a kind of oil for one year and Ahasuerus picked her as queen it is the anointing that is the difference they can call anybody for a job it is the anointing that separates you please respect the operation of the anointing don't let men just tell you that you will keep doing everything you are doing and it will never work until there is the anointing. Koinonia is nothing without the anointing. You can print all the posters you can, print all the banners you can, but the anointing. Your life is grossly deficient. And you see, Jesus was giving the anointing without measure. And we are all attaining there. But it doesn't mean you have the anointing without measure. It's not true. I've had preachers preach that you have the anointing without it's not true brothers and sisters for there is a progression in the spirit and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he watched my response to that dimension of operation after a while he increased it again boundaries can be enlarged in the spirit all of us are not functioning at the same realm that's why you can do what everybody is doing but your results are different it is the anointing it's the anointing you can collect the mic with a beautiful voice and sing but it is the anointing he said they were caught to the heart as Peter began to speak have you read the message in Acts chapter 3 it's not the kind of message you preach in a crusade but the anointing made the difference I treasure the anointing and I treasure the custodian of that anointing that's why we honor the ministry of the spirit let me tell you, when you are anointed, you are anointed. The worst that can happen is you can be criticized. But no man can doubt the finger of God. He said if it is bad, no kingdom divided against itself will stand. Right? He said, if I by the finger of God do this. The anointing. Please pray one minute where you are and say, Lord, let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life. The anointing. I don't know how else to teach you this. You must desire the anointing. The anointing will bring favor to your life. I'm telling you, in one day, it will open doors of prosperity you never imagined. You don't need to know nobody, I'm telling you. The anointing can bring peace to that family. It can bring peace. The anointing can bring peace. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many of us, we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here. But for many of us, the missing ingredient is that anointing. Samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady? 
when Delilah came, Delilah was attacking them. All she was concerned about was the anointing. Are you getting my point? Delilah had no business whether Samson was strong. No, 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 no. She said, what is the source of your strength? Tell me. That's all I want to know. Not when are you going to marry me. Not when will you take me to Chicken Republic. I want to know. How come you are a man who is so slim, yet you remove kids, yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things? What is the secret? And Samson kept it. The anointing was hidden in his hair. Right? According to the prophecy that was given, there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing, and he was told to protect it. As a Nazarene, he would not cut his hair. The spirit of the Antichrist walked in Delilah to keep luring him. And Samson said, do this and that. And she cried and said, Samson, all she was after was the anointing. That's why the devil is called Antichrist. The one who fights the anointing. He fights the anointing. He uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing. Blackmail to fight the anointing. Your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing. Because when you lose the anointing, you've lost it. And she shaved the head of Samson. Samson, the Philistines are after you. He got up. They didn't tear any part of his body, but the anointing left. And he was as weak as any ordinary man. And then they removed his eyes immediately. And Samson began to be a slave. The only thing that came back to Samson's life was the anointing. When they went and Samson stood and began to ask God for mercy, they kept Samson. The anointing was being mocked by a dragon, a god. And they said, You who has troubled the Philistines. But Samson said, Oh Lord. And while in minutes the hair began to grow, they didn't know. They didn't notice it. They were dancing. And when the hair came suddenly, the anointing came. Brothers and sisters, when the anointing is on your life, the result is instant. 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 The day you start preaching with the anointing, everybody will know. You don't need to tell everybody, call me pastor. They will call you ministers of our God when they see the anointing. You don't need to tell anybody, I'm a, I'm a great businessman. Let the anointing come anointing. Please pray in one minute. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Say, Lord, I need the anointing in my life. I need the anointing in my life. For those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing, say, Lord, increase my boundaries in the spirit. <laughs> Stretch the boundaries, oh God, in the spirit. Activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing. Let me lead by the anointing. Let me write that jam by the anointing. Let me write that YX by the anointing. Let me write the exam by the anointing. Let me do my office activities by the anointing. Let me preach. Let me run this ministry by the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have just about an hour or so and then we are done. Let me see how we can just touch whatever we can touch. We are supposed to start a new series tonight. And um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains. That in the days to come we are going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it. And um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We'll just do a two-part series. I think we'll just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we touch. Then eventually we'll continue. Maybe by next month. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. We are taking a series called The Imagines. The Imagines. 
is a series that seeks to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we are going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states. What, what is happening? These things are prophetic writings on the wall. And we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy. The emergence. So the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy. The prophecy that is upon God's people. The prophecy that is upon our nation. The prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers. Is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men. How men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and touch on the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy. The ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. So we need to be prepared now to align ourselves. God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East down the sub-saharan africa nigeria darkness looms across the nations of the earth hallelujah the pride of kings have been humbled in this season economies are melting down several things are happening across the territories of the nations and god did not leave us in the dark hallelujah he said for behold darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people that was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history and this is that time when darkness is covering the earth there are all kinds of perversions right the speakings of the beast the antichrist put as a system and as an entity oh, i had a lot to talk about tonight but i hope that the emergence, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities, from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because the system of the Antichrist also has its mode of operation. Are you getting my point now? The system of the Antichrist is a system that will usher in the presence of that figure. Not just a, as a system. And listen to me. There is a secret rebuilding of the Tower of Babel going on in the nations right now. Genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist called Nimrod, the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor God. That city is being rebuilt again. Hallelujah. The governmental policies that are being put, the ideologies, according to Revelation 13, and when you read and so on and so forth, the speakings of the beast. Remember what John saw. John said he saw a lamb with horns, 
and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what john saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talks like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination but let me tell you something it is it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy but in these days there is an open show of darkness it's no longer a hidden thing are you hearing what i'm saying it used to be a secret fraternity of the elite and so occasionally by divination they see through the vistas of time and they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems and so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation let me tell you something i've said it again and again i have an apostolic call i'm not a pastor and so i'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things no no listen i tell you the truth aside from the war between israel and the world every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what it's going on. a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the images i hope is that I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness here does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system and remember the bible calls certain classes of spirit rulers of darkness that means that dominion is magnified when there is no light they are not called rulers of light rulers of darkness and so they have controlled the economy of nations they have controlled everything almost all the music artists that have been killed right all of those people you you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life please listen to me i have seen many things 
I'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that. But let me tell you, on the strength of my secret place, the Lord has shown me many things. And one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil. It's, it, they, they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures. Now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones. Make no confusion about it. We are the ones that control your economy. We are the ones that control your educational system. We are the ones that control what your children watch. We can manipulate technology. I thought we would have time today. I would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you. Maybe next week we'll do that. Right? And you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of Babylon. Taking anything that looks like God out. There are two things that are of concern to me. Number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism. Let me explain to you what that means. Look up please. The teaching that every religion is an aspect of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is just different sides of seeing the same thing. Have you been taught that? So, there are all kinds of Christian sects, especially. Occultic sects branching out. pseudo Christian sects. And they have one mission. To be able to market this doctrine of, in quote, love and universalism. That means it doesn't matter. There are different ways to get to God. Rather than criticizing me, find my similarity with you. So that we become friends. Are you seeing that now? It is the same spirit of Acts chapter 16. When a lady who was with the spirit of divination, when Paul entered the city, what happened? She started looking for the areas of similarity. He is fivefold, I am fivefold. He said, these are mighty men. Why? So that if Paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out, people will say, you are the friend of Paul. So we will listen to you. The system of darkness. Eating people up. I've said it again and again. I, I, I pray so much, especially for our little children who are growing because the system was well designed. This is not something that started 10 years ago, 20 years, 100 years. No. It's a strategy by the devil. Right? They worked with demons to manufacture AIDS. They worked with demons to manufacture cancer. They worked with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight? Hmm. And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money, they have acquired all the fame and everything and they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why, why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery that every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity, music will precede that homage. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a, this, I pray that you will get what I'm saying. It was the custom of kings in ancient times. They would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples. And so they would now say, All hail the king. And there will be shofars that will be blown. Right? And at the sounding of that shofar, the entire nation will bow. If it was a graven image, they would do the same thing. Was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music would be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this God of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. 
I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit, to be able to raise a standard, then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth, at the same time, coincidentally, the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us, revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Did you know that Koinonia, you're coming here, they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book. We may never know. You may not find a place in this book written Joshua Selman or your name, but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of God. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming soon. Let me repeat myself. Whether you believe it or not, I'm announcing to you that Jesus is coming soon. Gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that, but I am telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Say Amen. He's coming soon. But before He's coming, He gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world that the knowledge of evil the rage of evil will increase the fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season as they are released from the pit of darkness they come with fierce anger the bible says satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short there is there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time there is a prophecy upon us. Over there 121 we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion, the city, the place of God, the place where they have been built and trained and prepared. Saviors shall arise. And he said they will judge the Mount of Esau. That rebellious entity, that system, the Antichrist system is called many things in the Bible. Jezebel, the dragon, Babylon, Egypt. They are all an expression of one and the same government. Running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her, uh, her, you know, her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ. She began to talk about the coming revival. I read a lot about revivals, both past and present, and the revivals to come. I began to read about how she said that Jesus appeared unto her. She had encounters with Jesus for like a year, true, genuine encounters. And in that encounter, he began to reveal to her about the coming revival. And she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the Spirit. And the way the inhabitants of the earth, the church, the ecclesia, God's system of victory, will be built and equipped. Hallelujah. So there is a prophecy upon us. Say there is a prophecy upon my life. Say one more time, there is a prophecy upon my life. You must believe that. You are not ordinary. Listen. You are coming to Koinonia. Whether you are inside or outside. Everything that is happening. 
is leading you towards prophecy. It may not look like it. You came for Koinonia with pains. You came to Zaria maybe as a student. Or you came to Zaria maybe to serve. Or you came to Zaria because you got a job. Or marriage brought you. You, In the midst of all of these confusions, I want you to know that there is a line of prophecy. There is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy. Praise the Lord. And it's important for us to know. But then, how does God make men? Because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revival is the making of reformers. What is the spiritual process? This will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now. And it will help and encourage us to stay true as God is working on us. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to show me this, my eyes were opened and I said, My goodness, can you imagine? First Peter chapter 4 verse 12, please. Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the word fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process, the mystery of the fullness of affliction. That fullness with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment. Please don't forget this. There is no champion. I said it, I think it was last week or the week before last. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No man of God just happens to be anointed by mistake. There's no such thing as that. No one just carries the glory of God by mistake. I want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power, to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit. To be a steward of God's finances. To be a steward of God's glory. To be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You may not like what this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The fullness of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his, the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trial. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings were there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of His wisdom and sovereignty, He is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them, they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit. I believe that. Absolutely. I don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace, but let me tell you, there is no spiritual champion. There is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You must understand this. You don't have to pray against it. There's nothing to bind there. Are you getting my point? The only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace, the sustaining power of the Spirit to go through it and finish well. 
Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name, you are mine. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He said, through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. But he said, when you walk through the fire, not run through it. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. When you walk through the fire, listen to me. It's very important. The way they make the anointing in Israel, they still do that. I have, I have, I have anointing oil straight from Israel with, with mar, spikenard, and all of these things that were used. Ancient ingredients. The, the, the spices that were originally used. It smells the exact requirement, the ingredients God gave. I have, I have a, um, a bottle of, of, of anointing oil like that. And every time I just put a little of that on my hand, I keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice, the smell. But then I studied a bit on how they make that oily. They have what they call a crushing stone, right? And they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive. And as it crushes the olive, it begins to squeeze out the oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is that way that God will make you become a man of truth. Afflictions are not there to kill us. The fullness of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience. Jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned it. It was not an impartation. He learned obedience. There were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience. You will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default. There is an operation of the spirit. There are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from God's perspective. And if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace, you will run and allow the devil mock God in your presence. Say after me, God forbid. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about challenges that is that number one, Affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Let me deliver somebody right away. There are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now. From finance, to your health, to maybe marriage, to whatever it is. And we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith. Let me tell you something. I have learned by experience, especially for students. It's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of childlessness or laziness. It's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your CGP is on one point something. You know, it's a terrible thing. You are an embarrassment to redemption. However, it may not be everybody, but let me tell you, there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking, that is taking them to where they themselves do not know. Just follow me. There are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for God, they are tithing and giving and they are committed to spiritual things. It looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back. It's like a, a cycle of woes and pain. I'm telling you this, that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic. It is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction. This, this teaching is not for babes. It's not just receive, receive. It, because I'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life. In spite of your prayer, you share God about everything but not that situation. And God looks silent. Lord, what is all this? And it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others, but for you. You have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer. All the scriptures you had were about comfort. I want you to know that there is a school you are passing through. And what you are receiving is a lecture. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Moses did not know why he ran away. And for 40 years, there were certain processes he was going through. He did not understand until the God of Israel.
called him and told him that he, there was a prophecy upon his life. Prophecies do not just manifest just because you love God. There is a pathway. It may not be for everybody, but everyone who truly wants to be used by God goes through this pathway. The fullness of affliction. Like a blacksmith, right? That melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them. There are several um, expressions in the Bible that are used to describe this process. The potter and the clay. The blacksmith. There are all kinds of processes. The Bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay. How that he picks up the clay, smashes it, right? And now begins to mold it into fashion. The fullness of affliction. It's a, it's a pathway in the spirit. It's the route that leads you to Galatians 2.20. That realm called I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I live in the flesh that is the body. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. You come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is strong until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the Spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is Amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, Amen. It's so that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the Spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, Afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We thought of faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last. Many of us have been taught, if you pray about something and it does not happen, you never had faith. If you had faith, it would have happened. Let me tell you, I honor and I respect those teachings. But it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say something. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith. There are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith. That's the reason why you are going through it. I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a part where you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart, you will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mbake, but say Rija. No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the furnace of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is seed that weepeth, bearing precious seed. It's not everything in life that happens with joy. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let any man fool you. 
there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and Jesus wept the Bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your Jesus wept it's alright to cry and express pain you get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you there are times that lack of finances will eat you up and you stand and you are saying I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed but I love God and I stay but the truth is the reality at the moment is that there is no food it's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening there is nobody that is sending you money anywhere the fullness of affliction the place where mighty men are made that's, that's where reformers emerge for David it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed here. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he stood there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures. That men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal tongue. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching, but this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah mysteriously at a point in my life I've shared my story when I was diagnosed with a fungal infection I prayed every prayer I know how to pray let me tell you if you say I didn't have faith you are joking I had the, the whole faith in the world it took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital took samples of my head I became an object of experiment in that darkness I began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you use to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you. After I went, see, look, let me, a sign. Let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that. What made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today. You think about it. Somebody just says, are you going to sleep with me as before for the money? And you laugh. They carry your money and go. And they say, there is no food. And you say, Lord, I give you glory. You sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep. You and the fire have become one. The Bible says you walk through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again. The fear of lack of membership happened. The fear of lack of money happened. The fear of the carryover happened. At the end of it, when you say, God, you are faithful, there is no strength attached. You suspected the relationship would break. Yes, it broke. But in all, you have learned to be strong. Look, let me tell you. That, that's the secret of courage. You see some men go and see the devil. Even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again. Because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch. Satan, Satan is not a fool. I've taught you this. He will touch your finances and see your reaction. If you do all this, he won't touch it again. Because it means it doesn't matter to you. Then you will touch your health. There is an aspect of your life you will touch. The way you will react, the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say, I found it. I found it. For many of us, every party touches you shout. And so God says, no, you are a babe. You may be the president of your ministry, but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead. A dead man doesn't have feelings again. 
so they just call you and say mr man your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh you say please can i can we continue what we are discussing and people say it's like you didn't hear me your 2.5 million car just crashed and lord i give you praise let's continue the fullness of affliction has done something to you you are not a pure human being again something spiritual has altered your humanity it has made you strong are you hearing what i'm saying absolutely this is the kind of fullness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children they say madam your child just died and they look and tears are coming out of their eyes and they are saying lord you are faithful when is the burial date and you are saying what sort of insensitive person no 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 the opposite of what i'm telling you is excessive emotionality and that's what the, the system of darkness is doing so people send every picture on facebook and twitter you are angry you you snap yourself and say i'm angry and then five minutes later you eat and say now yam has come you see that that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction there is a way you are bent they look at you and they say after next week they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh my god is faithful you become unperturbed you are not touched by anything may god take us to that realm if you don't get to that realm worry alone will kill you are you hearing what i'm saying if you do not get to that realm i guarantee you worry will kill you have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die have you seen people like that they just sit down bring me a stool and they sit down and die a man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself right and put the rope from under up and hang himself ready go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree the fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man please hear me it makes you a true spiritual man if you have never cried you have not gone through the fullness of affliction i guarantee you you have been passing through ac and the rest the fullness of affliction will bring tears in your eyes you will sit down one day and the whole world will change you you will not find value in anything one day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer as he's teaching you are teaching as if you are 70 years old you are just thinking about life when that happens to you you are going through a fullness of affliction you sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again not because you are depressed you are thinking about life. you come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except his majesty is god speaking to us as a man of god you come to a point where five months nobody you are praying and fasting and it's during that time no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around yes you are making tremendous progress in the spirit and you do not understand you stand to preach the generator spoils everything scatters your ego has been stung on top of that you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed and they say pastor at this thing you are teaching us we are not getting it you come to a point where you just play songs you play hymns and you just sit down everything remember all those country music this world is not my home you just sit down people say why you are, i mean life doesn't make sense hear me don't just laugh it's the fullness of affliction don't think it's happening because of lack of faith if no one has taught you rejoice when you are going through those things because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief god taught me this god taught me i didn't read it in any book god himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit no matter how anointed you are i give you a guarantee under the name of the lord jesus christ 
you must pass through that school. For you to be an approved man, that badge, you don't buy it, you don't bribe your way through it. The badge is a scar. A scar is a sign that your wound has healed. It's also a sign that there was once a wound. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Don't think I jumped the classes in the spirit. I went through it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord, watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't... There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you, and I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. It's, it's not too far from here. This second school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is. Everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy. I came out, held my Bible and I started praying in tongues. Let me tell you. I said, I'm going there. I was praying. I said, Lord, I pass through it with joy. A day will come, people will hear me. When I got there to make matters worse, it was the strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in. When I got to the church, they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down. There was no seat. When I got there, they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing. And then after everything, they whispered to me that please, I have 15 minutes. I should think of how to pass the time so that I can, I can, I can be snappy about it. It's called the fullness of affliction. Three days fasting. Not, not nonsense. Fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for. It's called the fullness of affliction. Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? Where? Ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the funnest of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me. So that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorarium. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to try clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I will join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside. I entered inside a tabloid. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became, I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody is even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you... God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh uh-uh, it's because you are different. Stay back. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can we can come in and pretend that it is all those all those things. 
people use those strategies and they compromise hallelujah they compromise say i will not compromise say one more time i will not compromise job said those who slay me yet will i praise him he said all the days of my appointed time i remember the day i got one proper honorarium i mean proper you know what i mean by proper something sizable enough for you to smile and say this looks like the anointing i carry that day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to show it. I said, come on, love. Papa. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish that you are dealing from the spirit hallelujah come sweet and come. let me tell you come, 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 come. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this is a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with the, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit. Against popular status quo. Praise the Lord. Banking and finance with even friends again. Yet, for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit. Let me tell you, if you want to be like everybody, you will suffer like everybody. If you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different, the accusations are fierce. Everybody will say, we are not doing it like this. So don't be a stupid person. Wisdom is profitable to direct. When God is telling you, go left. All prophets, like the ones in the Bible, would say, go right. It's always the right. God will say, you go left. It's a lonely road. But it's the funnest of affliction. God is speaking to some of us here. There are some of us seated here, inside and outside. You trek from your house or from your, whatever, your office or from school to come here. And if you don't get boss, you are trekking back. Don't complain. See it at the school. There is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit. Pay attention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no money coming from anywhere. Brother, if there is no money, relax. Get a cup of water and drink and smile. And know that the world will celebrate you. There is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me. I'm only grateful about it. Hallelujah. Sister, when God is done with you, then you will know why He trained you. When you see the kind of man He brings and the responsibility that is waiting, you will know why your training was different. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to? Many of us are seated here, although we are smiling. This day might not speak. Listen. We are smiling, but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me. There are many of you, this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here. Is you, you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for Koinonia. A lady came, they brought her in from Kaduna. Gas exploded on her. Gas, cooking gas exploded on her, burnt her face, burnt her lips. And I was calling this lady and she said, when can we come and see you? I said this morning, I thought they were joking. By 7 o'clock, the whole family, they carried themselves and they came. They carried the lady when I looked at that lady. And she was declaring the faithfulness of God. Beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas. Gas burnt her, her feet. And she loves God. Right? Many of you are touching your face. Nothing is happening to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know when I sat down and I prayed with this lady, while I was praying with her, her bond hands, she 
held my hand and as she was crying I could see this lady you, you could sense what she was saying I'm not giving up Lord you are faithful when I finished praying she said I should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we were going and she was walking tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade ground when she sees people with wheelchairs the school she passed to created a memory and that memory brings the anointing that's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle service i've gone through some pain enough in my life we say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched when was he touched during the furnace of affliction there are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members they don't know what is happening so they don't know how to preach they don't know how to love they don't know how to be there i've suffered hunger there are times that people come to meet me and say apostle as i am like this i'm not eating and i look and i say i understand no matter what it is don't give up they are trying to fight tears in their eyes i say don't give up don't be afraid i told you crying is allowed in the furnace of affliction crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass you your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are made. i fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast but i knew god was faithful hallelujah god. that's why today if you like bring 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 a bottle of drink that is one million and give it. I'll drink it, drop it, and continue what I'm doing. Because I've passed through a furnace of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It makes you to love people. I went through things in my life I would never want anybody to go through. It creates the true spirit of love. This army are men and women that for now, let me tell you, all over the earth, they are not manifesting yet, brothers and sisters. Many of them are still passing through the furnace of affliction. Some of you, it was your pain and tears that brought you to Koinonia. There is, there is an evil in your family waiting. And you are the one who is trying to emerge. And you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance. The devil is, is making them walk against you. Is that true? Some of you, after this koinonia, you are going back home. And the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, it's with a slap, they welcome you. They say you went to the guy's house and you keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap or realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I think and God said, that's not, get up, go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. There are times God will carry, tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a furnace of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. You are on your own with that album. He said, instead, carry the money and go and sow it to somebody. And it ha! I wish what I was saying were a lie. But it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal. And we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. 
I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do. All of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my name will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayer. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil. It's rum on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The fullness of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we are taking. It's called the emergence. We are looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the fullness of affliction. Where men are made. It is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again. It is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent. It is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day. It comes to a point where as the mountains surround Jerusalem, that's how everything has surrounded you. Where you are praying for something to be better, another thing comes up. The Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. Lightning came and scattered his building. Then he was told that he still one report after the other. And Job just sat on the ground. He said, naked I came. And he began to speak a lot of things. Let me tell you something. The fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again. Your silence becomes your prayer. And God hears it. Because that is the time you will be talking the loudest. You sit down. You can't open your mouth to say God is unfaithful. But to say God is faithful becomes difficult. And it's not a sign of unbelief. Hallelujah. That's the point where everything in your life does not seem to work. Yet you are making spiritual progress. Yet you are growing spiritually. You are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of. You lay hands on them and the power of God gets them free. But you have prayed and fasted for months. And this thing does not go. I bring you a matured message to the body of Christ. There is a making of reformers across the entire earth. These men, their dealings look harsh. But my brothers, let me tell you something. Do you know how the eagle trains the eagle to fly? It picks it up and throws it away. And just allows it. If you do, and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back, picks it up, takes it back and throws it away. That's why the eagle does not just fly, it soars. When other birds are moving around the eaglet, when I was an eaglet, I went to a lot. There are things you go through in life that kills fear. Somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says, I will kill you. All of a sudden, you remember how many in my life, too many things. Do you know why I don't fear? Cars jam me. One. Huh? You see all the things that have happened in my life? No human being born of a woman can kill me. I'm telling you this. It's not pride. You don't know. I told you, I've entered a car where the armed robbers were shooting. Uh, okay, no, they didn't shoot. We were coming from Port Harcourt, right? Armed robbers, I was sitting on C2. Luxurious bus. You know C2. The one that the, the driver is down. You are the one in front. There are perils you go through in life that make you mature. That's what releases the anointing. Life has squeezed you so much, there's nothing to squeeze there again. You are a dead man in Christ. You have no reputation of yourself. And then, when you never expect it, the light will shine. It will never happen when you... 
Joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he would be the prime minister. Probably he now said, Oh Lord, let me be in this prison for five more years. Five years is enough for me. Not knowing that that was the last night. He would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years. But that night, he was at the entrance of another realm, leaving the fullness of affliction forever. Hallelujah. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to trek from that place near Chicken Republic till aviation. I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? He says, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claims God is calling him. Your father will say, Not my God. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of us. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It is a furnace of affliction. If it has an entrance, it has an exit. You may walk through it so slow, but the day you will come out, you, you will be without information. You will, you will step into an anointing you will never recover from. You will step into a level of grace you will never recover from. The day Jesus appeared to me, I was not prepared for that visitor. I just loved him. I wanted him with my life. And then he appeared to me. I perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction. They have lasted years. You have done it. Let me tell you, when that season comes to an end, you don't need connection. Everything works for you, including your enemies. It's a sign that that season has ended. And so God stamps it upon your life. Jesus died and was in the grave. All of a sudden, while they were discussing his death, Jesus the Christ, he got up, he was on his way to Emmaus. And two people were saying, have you had, ah, this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples. So Jesus died and the man said, really? He died, brothers and sisters, but he only died for three days. What you are passing through will not kill you. If he would have killed you, you would have died since. This is how you know it's a furnace of affliction. Because in it you never die. You go through everything that can kill you. But when all the dust settles, you are still standing. This is a message for you to preach to some of our parents. They have done their best. Some of you right now, you are the ones feeding your family. Although you are students. It's you that sends money. Mommy, take 2K. And your mother is saying, Lord, where will you change that story? Tell her, Mommy, there is a reformer rising in this house. That is the reason. Like the blood that was put. There is a mark that is upon this family. As, as, as we are sitting, there are mega ministries that are rising. But listen, it will not rise by claiming your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar. That's what will make your altar sacred. That's what will make your anointing uncommon. It is good to receive impartations, but in the fullness of affliction, you dig your own well by yourself. You dig that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the Spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction. You will pass through pain. You will pass through rejection. You will pass through criticism. They will misunderstand you. You don't need to defend yourself. You will pass through all kinds of things. The Bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing. When you pass through fiery trials, lift your voice and begin to pray, Koinonia. Everyone, pray. I draw strength 
I draw strength from the journey ahead. I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticism. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child, I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Forty days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. Pray. I draw strength for my family. They may be persecuted. My father has lost his job, mother lost her job, but I draw strength. The storms do not come to kill me. They come to make a reformer out of me. I am part of the program of God. I'm part of the program of God. I may cry for now. I may weep for now. I may not have a helper. But I lift my eyes onto the hill. From when comes my help. I may pass through the fire. It will prove me. It will discipline me. It will teach me obedience. But in the name of Jesus, I will not give up. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer. I will not give up. The sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given. That mantle, that anointing, for your ministry, for your business. Pass through it. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. No matter what happens, I may cry, but I will not give up. I may weep. There is an anointed man rising from this pain Out of this ashes Out of this ashes There is a general A custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom The reward for the pain Is the anointing The reward for the pain Is the anointing The reward for the pain The reward for the scar The reward for the crying is a new song. He will give you a sword in the spirit. He will do great business for the kingdom. Therefore, arise. Pass through it. I bring you a prophetic word. Pass through it. It will not kill you. The sword will rise. The sword will rise. You will vomit, but pass through it. You will try many times. Pass through it. You will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure hunger. Pass through it. I won't give up. I refuse to give up. There is a reformer. There is a principality. There is an anointing coming out through my pain. There is an anointing. Sorry, I'm writing history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Listen. The last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God. Some of you are crying. Don't let it embarrass you. You are going to say, Lord, through the pain, I say to the heavens, you are faithful. I've been mocked, but you are faithful. I saw the carryover, but my God, you are faithful. They called me a failure. They sent me from the job. But Lord, you are faithful. He said he will marry me. After introduction, he taught me. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I lost my brother through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my father through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my pain. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me trouble. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me pain. You are faithful. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me a carryover. You are still faithful. My integrity ministry has dedicated me to the background. You are faithful. So I will write an edition. So he slay me. Yes, will I pray him. And all the days of my life, I will wait. But I will wait. I will be misunderstood. But I will wait. When all is said and done, the properties of the kingdom will be granted to me. Hallelujah. We have one minute. I'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother. You may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up. I'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit. I speak to you. You saw your result yesterday. Seven carryovers. You don't know where you will start from. But I speak strength from the throne. They threw you away from the job. And they said what you study cannot give you a living. Your ministry seems to have died. No one is recognizing your grace. But I speak strength. Speak strength. Hallelujah. 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 Now look at me. Very quickly. I want to pray specially. And I just want you to indicate by lifting your hands. You don't need to come out here. There are people who came tonight. And all you came to do is to receive strength. You have come to the end of your road. Please, not everybody. I just want you to lift your hands as I minister to you. Things have happened. You had news in your family. Humanly speaking, there's no strength to continue. This thing has wearied you. You can't even pray again. You have prayed every prayer you know how to pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive the supply of the strength of the Spirit. I speak to you. You are coming out of this. You are coming out. Generals, before you have passed through it, they didn't die. You will not die in it. Your Redeemer still lives. He may look silent, but he will speak. He may look silent, but he's preparing a table before you. You may not have money in your pocket, but I want you to know that you shouldn't compromise. The hand of your God is coming for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for families here represented who have come to the end of the road. You have done all you know to do and nothing seems to be working. I want to announce to you that there is prophecy at work in your life. There is the making of a reformer. 
is part of the budget process. Zion does not keep that without traveling. Instead, as soon as Zion travails, there is a there is there is a a, a level pain in the skin, and it's because of what is about to be present in your life. Pass through the pain, like a woman passes through the pain. It may last for hours. For some women, it may last for days. Others, it may even require surgery. But make sure the baby is not lost. Make sure you keep it. Because that baby represents your prophetic destiny. Keep that vision. Cry for keep the vision. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we Blessing for tonight. Thank you for the privilege. Bless his name tonight. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. Shibalabakabara. Singing, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is ever to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is ever to me. Lift your hands as you worship in this song. Your presence is heaven to me. We're singing like you in one minute to open your mouth and declare to the Lord how much you love him how much you place value on him more than silver and gold more than anything that this life has to offer just tell him how much he means to you You mean everything, everything, everything. Go ahead, express your love. I love you with my life. With everything. Bada bada da bo. Kingdom reign. Yes, it reigns. Above all. Above all. Your kingdom reign. Yes, it rains above all. Above all, Lord, your kingdom rains. Your kingdom rains above all. Above all, in my life. 
in my life Your kingdom reign Your kingdom reign In my life In my life Your kingdom reign Your kingdom reign in my life, in my life, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. it when we declare our love. Lord, I love you. I can do without many things, but not without you. You're not one of those things I can do without. I've learned to do without many things. I can do without the praises of men. I can do with or without ministry, but not your presence. Listen, you are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. Listen to what you're saying. Let it be a communication and not a special number. Seeking you as a precious jewel. I'll keep seeking and never stop. You are the lamb, the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. The symbol of our victory, majesty, we worship you. 
for giving your blood. Worthy is your name. ambassadors of the kingdom. We live in a time in history when we need to understand the dealings of God across the nations. For us to be relevant in the kingdom we must look beyond ourselves. Hallelujah. We cannot at this point just be looking for bread to eat, water to drink. The purposes of the kingdom is bigger than that. So we must stretch our desire for spiritual things to be beyond us and begin to look at the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be examining the Antichrist system, the structure, Babylon. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to pay attention. The goal of the series, The Emergence, is to bring us to a point where we realize that the church is God's strategy. The church is not just an institution. It is a strategy. It is the name given to God's strategy. The apostolic and prophetic strategy that will establish the victory that was shared upon the cross. Hallelujah. And um, 
I began to tell us that there is a prophecy upon our lives and upon our generation. Understanding that prophecy and knowing how to walk with it becomes the key to being relevant in this season. Hallelujah. So we are going to be examining the system. There is a system. There is a kingdom. Please follow me. There is an operation of darkness. Whether or not you believe it, there is a system that has been at the fabric of human civilization. Hallelujah. And this system has evolved itself through time. Hallelujah. Masquerading itself in secrecy, evolving through human civilization, but one and the same system. Hallelujah. Because you see, the contention of light and darkness is unto one goal. An advocacy of an allegiance. What you see happening in the world system today is the continuation of the desire of Satan. He began this from the heavens and was judged. And all through time, everything that has happened in human history is a contention of light and darkness. To the end that the allegiance of mankind be submitted to an entity called Satan. And if we do not understand the happenings of this system, we will not... You see, the, the circumference of our understanding must transcend beyond healing. If, come, if this gentleman is sick and has cancer, for instance, and I lay my hands upon him and I say be healed. And he is healed of the cancer. Um, as good as that is, it falls short of that which God desires for us to know. Are you getting me? Because the cancer in, is in his body because of an ancient story that predates even his existence. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. And we must understand why the contention. Why is the devil determined to oppress your family? Why is the devil determined to stop you from marriage or stop you from giving birth? Is it just because he doesn't like you? Is that all? Is that all to the story? Why the aggression and the hostility from hell? Why does the devil want you poor and broke? Just because he doesn't want you to have a house? No. You see that? There is an ancient story that predates our existence. And we are just in the middle of history. And we must come to a point where we are taught and we understand. We must connect to history. Then we will be able to appreciate what Jesus did on the cross. And then we will be able to know our roles as individuals and as a church in returning the Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel. Daniel lived in a time that was very prophetic, very strategic. The book of Daniel is an adumbration, a foreshadowing of the church, our mandate, our assignment. And the book of Daniel, theologically speaking, gives us the clearest explanation about the system of Babylon. Now, the Antichrist system over time has carried different names. Egypt, Babylon, Jezebel, the world system. Hallelujah. Regardless of the name you call it, it is one and the same system led by the same agenda it has not changed strategies have evolved through civilization but it has been one and the same so daniel found himself in a land of captivity alongside his friends you know in a place called babylon and it was during the time of a king called nebuchadnezzar kings in those days were like gods they were literally gods Aside from their physical stature, like 
Og, the king of Bashan, he was said to be a Nephilim, a giant. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar was a very amazing king. And the Bible tells us that at a point, he had a dream. And it was a strange dream. Can you help me with the fan? Please. Really shift it, my Bible. Just shift it a little away from me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and called all his sorcerers and said, I need the meaning of this dream. And when he was angry that they could not interpret the dream, he said, go and kill them. And Daniel said, no, not so. Don't be hasty. Give me time. Hallelujah. Give me time and the interpretation will come. And the Bible says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And in the description of what Daniel saw, he saw an entity made of the head of gold. I'm just rushing so that we'll get to the core of the teaching. The head was made of gold, right? The chest was made of silver. Is that true? From the stomach region down to the thigh, it was made of bronze. And then he began to describe that the feet was a mixture of, of iron. You know, the, the legs were iron and then the feet was both iron and clay. Now, it was a revelation of different dispensations. That would come. And Daniel began to speak to the king. That dispensations would begin to come. It was, it was a revelation of different appearances of the structure of this Babylon. A godless system. Hallelujah. But then, let me just recap a bit to help us understand. The Bible makes us to understand that a lot happened in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. I know that we know about the old story i've shared it again and again here but maybe for the benefit of those who have not been here for a long time let me just recap again how that the story between mankind and the devil and darkness is an ancient story is that true and i did tell us how that satan is not the opposite of god it's important for us to understand this because what we call eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations. Is that true? And that there was a dispensation where Satan did not exist. Is that true? Satan was created out of the predeterminate wisdom of God. There was a dispensation in time where he did not exist. Hallelujah. Job 38 begins to give us um, a lot of, of, of revelations when God was speaking with Job. Now, when Satan came on board, I told you that the office of Satan in heaven was what? The custodian. The name Satan is not the name of an entity. The name Satan, Satan, means accuser. Right? And devil means what? Deceiver. So he said you shall cast out devils. It's not the name of a person. It's a generic name. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible makes us to understand how that um, this being was created and according to the order of his fashion because your office in heaven determines both your instrument of creation right, and the kind of service you are going to bring. And so Lucifer was meticulously created using sound, pipe, string instruments. And I hope you realize that Lucifer's jurisdiction of operation was the Garden of Eden. Remember? I told you the Garden of Eden was not created for Adam. The Garden of Eden existed long before Adam. Are we there? Lucifer was in the Garden of Eden. The very Garden of Eden was his habitation. And the Garden of Eden was not in the earth. I hope you know. Is still intact. There, there are different planes of heaven as we are taught in the Bible. The heaven of heavens is where God dwells. But there are many other planes. Those planes are still existent today. Is that true? Are we following now? I just want us to get the background so that we will understand this concept. You see, when you understand this, there are certain levels of spiritual authority you will stand upon. It will no longer be a guesswork. Or trying to jack yourself into their reality. Light has brought you into that truth. 
some things no longer will exist because you have found something that is true. Are we following now? And so, on the strength of Lucifer's office, being the light bearer, he had access to the presence of God. And let me say it again, I'm just doing a recap. I've taught us how that angels grow by what? Excelling in light. Is that true? That's how you measure the age. In the realm of the spirit, we don't age like time. There is no time. So you measure the age of spirit beings by how much they've had access to the throne room. Because every time you meet God, there is an emission, a rub off of His glory upon you. Right? And even in heaven, you do not visit the throne room every time. Because even at that realm, the glory of God is too strong for you to come and stay there. Access is granted unto you. Hmm. Praise the Lord. And so, because of Lucifer's function, Lucifer means the light bearer, the custodian of the revelations of the heavens. He had unusual access to the presence of God and it increased his beauty and his light. Even among the cherubim, right? He was the most valued. Because you see, before man was created, the order of heaven is the Trinity. Now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he was not called Father. I hope you know he only became Father when Jesus became Son. Is that true? So, he was not called Father. God Almighty, Jesus was called the Word. His name still is the Word. Hallelujah. And then the Spirit of God. So, the organization was God. Now, as we know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have the angelic Kedah, right? And then the head of the angels are the seraphs. The head of the seraphs are the cherubims. And the head of the cherubims was God. So directly after the cherubims, I mean God was the cherubims. Are you seeing that? So that access. But now when God created man, what happened? He took man, making him equal, right? With himself. The order changed. So now the head of the seraph is the cherubim. The head of the cherubim is the woman. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of man is God. Christ. Now and the head of Christ is God. This is the structure. Are you getting the point now? When you understand the proximity between the cherubims and women, you will know why many women are under the influence of strong spirits. Hallelujah. That's, that's for another teaching. You, you, see, you see that they seem to be the most vulnerable. There is a reason. It's not just because they are ladies. Hmm. Get the teachings. They are all available. Praise the Lord. And so, this rebellion was led. Watch this. The Bible begins to tell us in Ezekiel um, 28 and Isaiah 14, the manifesto of Satan. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. Right? He said, I will be like the Most High. That's what he said. What do you think would have given Satan audacity to want to replace God? To be equal with God means to be a partaker of his nature. To be equal to God means you can replace him. That's what Lucifer wanted. Are you, are you understanding my story? And so he mobilized a lot of the angels in heaven. Apollyon, Leviathan, Baal, Mammon. All these were spirits. Mobilized them in a rebellion to fight. I'm, I'm just doing a quick recap. There are teachings already on that. And for them to fight, they needed to change their original estate. That's what the Bible says. Original estate means your default position of creation. Because in heaven, um, how many of you have seen, uh, maybe doctors when they are going for surgery, they put on their lab coat, right? There is an attire they wear because of their function. That's how it is in heaven. You don't wear clothes like this. Uh -uh. The, the garments in heaven change according to what you are doing. So if you are going to the throne room, you wear a garment called praise. It's not just a song, it's a garment. The psalmist saw it, right? <laughs> He said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that true? And so for these spirits to carry out their treason, they needed to leave their original state of creation so that they will assume a structure that will be able to afford them 
that which happened and this was shown to John in the Isle of Patmos he said there was war in heaven and what happened Lucifer that rebellious entity attempting to fight because he had known all the mysteries of God by reason of being the custodian of the mysteries and he said if this is all God is then I've read everything I know every possibility that can be in God. Are you getting my point? And when there was that fight, the Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth when he prevailed not. Remember? Revelation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil, that old serpent has been cast down and he comes with anger and great fury. Now, the meaning of that is this. When it was obvious that Satan and his cohort, a third of the angels, the Bible tells us, would not prevail. In their bid to run back to their original estate, they were trapped from the heavenlies. Are you getting me? Never to be like they were again. And never to be like mankind. So by default, the devil and all his entities are in a perpetual state of torture. Aside from anything. So they cannot be in a state of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is, it is in the character of darkness to run to and fro. The book of Job. When he asked him, he said, From whence comest thou? What did he say? Running to and fro. Jesus gave us a revelation that when a spirit leaves a man, what happens? That means if they can find expression in human vessels on the strength of the fact that man is the highest of God's creation, they can assume some position of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Lucifer led that rebellion. And when it did not happen, he was cast down to the earth. Watch this. And something happened. Because you see, perfect love casts out fear. And if God is love for casting Lucifer, he must justify the fact that he was not insecure. And so he created man and gave man everything to prove that it was not because he was afraid like a politician fighting his rival. Are you getting Are you getting the story now? So he created man. Angels were created from light. But man was made from the dust of the earth. And the Bible says God took his very cupboard. That image, what Satan died fighting for and put in the man. And then he made him in charge of everything. When that was happening... Lucifer was watching. Hey, Lucifer was not somewhere moving around. Lucifer had access to watch. He saw the creation of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when he saw man, he saw God authorize him and give him the seat of dominion. And then, in Eden, Lucifer's very habitation, that was where man was kept. Are you saying that it's an old story? You just know that something happened. Your father got up in the morning. One leg could not move. It's an old story. It's, it's not just the issue of healing anointing. It's about understanding the agenda of God. And let me tell you, when you know this, you will do more miracles unconsciously. Because there is a light from you that will emit everywhere you go. You become a true advocate of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? And so Lucifer, in that situation, came and started beguiling man. And I told you that what happened in the Garden of Eden was a foreshadowing of redemption. Is that true? Because the Bible tells us that authority was given to Adam, the man. Is that true? But Eve was made out of his nature. So she was a partaker of the man's nature. Are you getting the point now? And so when that happened, they had dominion together. Satan ultimately wanted to take off the dominion. And the only way he would take off the dominion, watch this. If God created man in his image, right? And put that man as the highest of his creation. Then it means if that man bows to Satan, what is he saying in essence? If I am equal with Christ and I bow to you, I have accepted that Satan is greater than him. Are you getting the whole dynamics of what happened in the garden? 
And so for him to do that, he came through woman. Watch this. I want to explain to you a very powerful mystery. Please follow me. Adam did not fall by mistake. First Peter tells us. It was the woman who was deceived, not the man. Let me tell you why Adam fell. Adam fell because according to God's system of love, you have to love unto death to prove that you love. Are you getting what I'm saying? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now that the woman had fallen, the man had to follow her because of love. That's why for Jesus to redeem us, he needed to come down and be like us. The same way Adam left his estate to be like his wife. Are you following me now? Are you getting the whole thing? So Adam was not deceived. When he fell, immediately God looked from the heavens. And saw the throne that he put man upon empty. And when he saw that throne, it was on account of that. He said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't just saying, Adam, are you naked? What happened now? You don't you know you are an adult? That's not what he was saying. Hallelujah. He saw the throne. It was a spiritual position of dominion. And when he saw it, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I had to follow this woman. And God did not rebuke him. Because that was a true picture of love. And he said, woman, what have you done? She said, the serpent. Satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of God. And he said, this and that will happen. And he said, the seed will bruise your head. Now, understand that Satan has known that God is prophetic in his statements. The meaning of that was a confusion to him. Because until man came, reproduction had never happened. Only creation. They never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman, all of a sudden Satan saw me, um, I said Mary, um, Eve getting pregnant and then she gives birth to Cain. And Satan says, This is amazing. Thinking Cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied, he entered into Cain. Are you seeing that? Then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again and gave birth to Abel and he made Cain kill Abel. Are you following me now? Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest Let our King be saved. Oh, oh. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Sorry, 4. 4 verse 16. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16, it's projected. Read, one to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from Him. It means to depart willfully from His governing authority. Cain said, God, as far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain departed from the presence of God and he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings name cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, from this city, Christ, or God as we know, was not the head of this city. 
It was a city of rebellion. Are you getting what I'm saying? All kinds of human atrocities began to happen. Anger, envy, killing, rivalry. It was, and it was the government of Satan. The first manifestation of the government of Satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. Are you getting this now? And the Bible says, the moment that happened, we see the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah in the Bible. It came in the person of Noah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of Elijah is not a person. It's not a prophetic spirit. It's the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God. Because he said, every time a revival is about to happen in the earth, there is a spiritual pattern. Elijah must show up. Is that true? When, when, when there was darkness all around, Elijah the Tishbite showed up. Right? Micah, Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Is that true? Before Jesus showed up, who came? Elijah. In John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, this Babylon, the spirit of Babylon is a governmental system. It's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance. Please understand this. That is the reason why Babylon oftentimes would operate with kings. Notice that Jezebel married Ahab the king. The same spirit of Jezebel reemerges in Herodias, making sure the original wife of the king dies. And then Jezebel in Herodias marries the king. Is that true? Herod in your Bible. And then demands for the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with the head of a man? In continuation to the vow Jezebel made to Elijah that I will remove your head. After many years, human beings change, but the agenda is still the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. So, Noah was the first manifestation of of a true son of God and, and, and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament right? we see in the book of Job 38 sons of God man was not even made that was during the creation of heaven the sons of God were rejoicing it's an office in heaven sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia. Three large stadiums. Right? Three story buildings. Made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth time building that. He committed his entire life to build the ark. And when that happened, Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives entered in. And what happened? There was judgment. Is that true? The whole race was white. And out of eight people, the spirit of the Antichrist, still thirsty for the continuation of the agenda. What happened? The Bible says Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And then one of his sons saw his nakedness. I've said it again. That is a coded language. That is more than just seeing a man's nakedness. Don't parents take their, don't children take their parents to the hospital? Don't they bath them? What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cost? It was more than that. It was not just looking at a man's nakedness. There were mysteries that were given Noah. It was that mystery. The spirit of the Antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries. Because Satan does not know the future. I hope you realize that. It's because he did not know the future. That's why they killed many people during Moses' time. If he knew, he would look for Moses exactly and kill. Satan is not so accurate. You see, the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations. Because speaking, he said, O king of Tyre, he said, Thou which subdued the nations. The strength of evil is deception. 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 Nations can be deceived. And if we are to be ambassadors, we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age. If you are following me, say Amen. After the judgment 
of Noah out of the eight people, Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism. He said, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass this and that, the land of China. Verse 3. And talking about Nimrod now. Nimrod Kush. That man, Nimrod. Have you read about him? Nimrod, the son of Kush. Now, theologically speaking, Nimrod killed his father, Kush, and married his mother, Semiramite. And today she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Antichrist entered into Nimrod, a governmental system. See it again. And he said, come, go to let us what? Build a city. Notice that every time that spirit manifests, it seeks to build a city. A godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock God. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, everything that has happened from Genesis 11 until Jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness. So, the Antichrist system it's not just a system of witchcraft. It's not just a system of perversion. It's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? This is a very powerful teaching. If you do not understand this, you, you will be in for a root shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory. Watch this. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, what happened? Matthew chapter 4, from verse 4. Satan, when he finished fasting, I hope you realize that all Satan had been doing. Do you know the reason why every nation fought Israel? Because of that prophecy, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The moment God entered a covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people, when John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He said, I'm the voice of one. They said, well, who are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my... He said, behold the Lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this. Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number two. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, jump. Jump. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> he would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse six, please. Let's go to verse six. Or seven, seven. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay, eight. Let's look at eight. Okay. It says again, watch this. It says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today that when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world? It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? 
He said Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed there to us the strategy of the advancement of the Antichrist system. Watch this. This is how Satan markets it. In that mountain there is wealth. In that mountain there is job without struggle. In that mountain there is free marriage without toasting. Look up please. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he said he took him up to that mountain. And he showed him the glory. So watch this. Satan never tells you what you are to do. He first shows you what you will get. So that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, All these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? He <laughs> says, If thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me, the Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said, the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom. Take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long road? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years, and, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If it does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelation 18. Let me show you. We hail you most high. I hail you most high. Revelation 18. Let me read very quickly. Watch this. It's going to be a long read in verse 1. Revelation 18 verse 1. Are you there? And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And the earth was made bright with his glory. And he cried with a mighty voice, saying, What? Babylon is Babylon the great is falling. It says and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast. Watch this mystery. Verse 3. Let's see if media can help us. 
If you are fast enough to help us, then fine. Otherwise, I'll just go back to my Bible. For all nations have done what? Have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why you see women representing that system. Jezebel, Babylon. When they meet prospective kings, when they meet talented people, like a harlot comes to a man, they come seeking a fraternity. Bow down to me. Fraternize with me. And I will open the gates of the kingdom. I will open the gates of wealth. I will open the gates of grace. I get what I'm saying. It says, and the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. And the merchandise of the earth are worth rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She made them rich. She made the man a governor. She made the man a president. Voting or no voting? Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of ri nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a spiritual dimension to everything in life. When you see somebody just get up, travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire, the Bible says, ah, okay, we're in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 3 that the kings committed fornication with her. Let's run to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So there is a prophecy. The Antichrist system will crumble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Already there is a prophecy ahead. That anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was the prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled. And there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour, all you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself. In ancient times, the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that. Watch this. When Jesus came, Jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then from that time till now, there is a contention. And the contention is twofold. Number one, an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance. And then number two, to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of God. Are you seeing that now? So the first dimension is personal. That's what you call new birth. That's what you call salvation. A declaration that I choose. I have an option to choose between Babylon and peace. I will show you how that many Christians suffer casualty. Because they claim they are born again. But they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office. Right? Fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a harbourist and they will say, just make sure this and that happens and you are the boss. And now you come to work, a Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. Have you seen how Babylon works? 
So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shuts the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon. There is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's playing. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So, you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace. And they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So, it uses different things. Mammon, it uses loss, it uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilly system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we'll, we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laughed. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Don't say it does not concern you. Don't say it does not concern you. When you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well. FFF, welcome, Babylon is at work. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a lecturer looks at you and says, if you want to graduate, you know what to do. Go and wait for me at the back of my office. What is that? The Antichrist system masquerading itself. Now it's not even masquerading itself. It's coming out openly. A man looks at you and says, look at your employment letter. Go back and say, Lord, I love you anyhow. God doesn't want that kind of prayer. It's good to love him anyhow, but the church must rise. He says, we are the city set on a hill. 
we will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry the day Jesus will come he will wipe our tears he can wipe your tears now are you getting what I'm, sh- I'm sharing with you the system right now little children watch cartoons and see right all kinds of 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 things that should not be shown children are so addicted not just because they want to watch there is a com- they have mastered the mind don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit so little children love seeing blood they love violence you see a little doll baby right if they want me to buy this cup now they will give this cup hips right this cup will have hips it will say use me and you see the man rush i want this one ten bring ten of this cup why because it is a system it has been fabricated it was so subtle we didn't know when it has evolved are you getting what i'm saying right now? seduction the seduction that's why it gives it the language of a fornicator the same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union that's what babylon is doing right now they determine everything everything they create the trends they do everything that happens they control our speaking our language right they tell you what to say they tell you what slang to say they tell you what film to watch they define what is civilization for you if you do not assume a particular mode you are not civilized and it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend one time i i i think um i don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat and they brought all kinds of things i told them i said the work that i do if i use this utensils to eat i won't be satisfied get me a spoon i don't have time for for nonsense you bring all kinds of things I, the Bible says, he who does not walk should not eat. That means he who walks. You watch people in the restaurant sweating, pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork. Right? Cutting themselves up with knives. I must do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm saying, you see, a system has brought you under pressure. Right? I saw one guy bab his hair and bab dollars. And I said, this guy is broke. He's poor. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a religious person, trust me. But I'm saying, it is the pressure. He probably watched the actor of a film. Or a musician with dollars or something on his head. And the guy must become like that. The pressure of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? There were times when our secondary school had decent teachers. You dress, you talking, you look nice. Now, you go and see the people teaching. The guy enters as if he came to pick papers. How are you students? You see that? And, 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 the, and the students watch that. This is the model. This is the mentor that they have to become. If we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach, there will be casualty in the decades that are coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics. People ask me questions, I say, I, I don't like PDP, I don't like APC, I don't like anyone. All I know is, whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. Don't you think the church is dead? Ask Ebola. The church is very alive. Very, very alive. We sent it back to hell where it came from. Hallelujah. There may be imperfections, but the church is marching. Let me tell you, Jesus is found where the church is. No matter what happens, the church in Nigeria is alive. We are the firstborn of God who will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic Christianity before Christ returns. Yeah, that rejected stone. That, why do you think Boko Haram and the rest? It's not just about politics. They are being led by an influence they do not know. But the church will stamp them out. Next week I will be showing you what we can do. Because they've made the church look powerless. That if you don't have... It's not just about finance. 
there is an anointing. Jesus Christ took his power and gave that system. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't just call one person and say, You, I give you. If you like this guy, I give him. No. He took his power, the power that will crumble Babylon, and said, My ecclesia, take it. I've given it to you. But we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this. Right? We do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the Christ. Let me tell you something. Days will come when things will happen in this nation. You will be surprised. You will wait and see tongue-talking Christian bankers. We will sack anybody who does not love God without apology. Look, look, look. Watch this. The members will be in our churches. So we are the ones who will teach them. And this big mouth, it won't keep quiet. My goodness. My goodness. That time is coming. It's coming. That's what you are becoming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. They don't know it. God has shrouded us in a mystery. When he's done with us, we will prove to creation that Jesus did not tell a lie. A witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true. If, I, if you steal our money and I saw you, right? And we're in court. They will say, stand, hold your Bible. Swear that nothing but the truth. The moment you finish, they say, did you see it? I say, I saw it. They say, prove it. I say, this is the picture. So the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross, there is a spirit that was there and he's in us. And in partnership with that spirit, we will prove that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. No longer allowing Babylon to kill our children. Huh? I wanted to chain one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss. I wanted to call him, use two fingers and just whip him and say, who taught you? Probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look, church, I want you to wake up. That's why we call this series the Imagines. There is an imagine. The Bible says, Obadiah 1 verse 21, it says, Saviors. That's what he called them. Saviors shall arise. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Romans 8 verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared. There are people, there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them. It's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said, when you begin to see darkness upon the earth, start rejoicing. It's time to arise. Are you not seeing what is happening in the earth? The meltdown. They've not seen anything. A heavy melt. Because the selfishness of man will never allow him to carry out Satan's agenda. Somebody will betray somebody. They don't have love. They cannot love. Because love is shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. Love is not affection. Love is shed abroad. That character that can make you almost die to protect another. They don't have it. That's what happened to Boko Haram. They started killing everybody all and sundry. When those who sponsored them started denying, they said, oh, you are denying us. Let everybody, you are our enemy. Hallelujah. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Nations will crumble. It has only started. You, the pride of kings will be humbled. Their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see. Like Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall, when it writes upon your government, is over. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Many kings have, they, they, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic and vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic. 
and stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority, the word is exousia, the capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourself there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere. Spiritually. Notice, brothers and sisters, that our, our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children, no CF. Huh? What they used to call the placenta of the baby, we don't even know. Whether it's hot, cold, whether, whatever. They just cut that 13 times and nothing happened. But here a woman comes because of her allegiance to God. Something happens. They now start saying there's a fibro. That devil is a liar. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, yeah. Break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer. By depending on your boss for your daily bread, you are partnering with that. There is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires. Not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom show. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing. Like the ark of Noah. The spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. 
I just hear what I'm saying. Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing. We will make our own program. We don't have dull people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you in your sleep. You see these things in dreams. You know that there is something about your life. It's beyond ABU. It's beyond Zaria. Some of you, God took you wherever and brought you here. God gave you admission with one task. It's not about jam. It's about an agenda. Hallelujah. I see this thing every day. As the nations crumble, I see it as a signal. God is saying, son, stand up. Stand up. Church, rise up. I call my bride, the firstborn of God, to arise. But the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us. Hallelujah. The, the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was, he was decorated a general last year. I said, that's right. Anybody that disturbs us will tell him. It's part of kingdom advancement. Gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The kingdom will promote the ideology of God through one word. It's called influence. 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 That's why we we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian sins and they act man of God. Sha da 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 or the demon. And then he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money. But it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness Sack lecturers that trouble our ladies. Employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord. Next week I will show you the strategy. I'm not just making noise. I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit. I'm not, I'm not a stupid person just making noise. There is a strategy. Lord, you are higher than any other. We will declare to the nation. Sing one more time. Say. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than men. Our God is bigger. On the way power. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. The woman stood there. I was talking and I was just watching. I said, Mama, what is wrong? And they said, for five months, they've taken this woman to the hospital. They said, arthritis, she cannot walk. I, I said, that devil is a liar. All of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes. 
and I saw this innocent woman die. I from my head to her toe I saw snakes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. For this purpose, for this purpose, for that joblessness. That every time you see a challenge, say for this purpose. For this purpose. They said you will not graduate for this purpose. They said no job will come for this purpose. For this purpose. For this purpose. For this purpose. Everybody in your family is an idol worshiper. But for this purpose you came. God has taken you as an envoy to crumble Babylon. To crumble Babylon. It will happen. Forget about the pain of today. Hear me. Forget about the disappointment. I see men and women who will get married. It's true. Your child is praying in tongues. It's true. A little boy. While you pray in tongues, he's praying. No, 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 no. Listen. We won't be fighting and beating our wives. It's over. By now we know it's a spirit. And we have authority against it. Men are not that bad. Women are not that evil. Babylon masquerading itself. Gone are those days. I tell you, all things are past. God is doing something new in our time. God is working something powerful in this day. God is building a mighty army in our days. And he won't stop, he won't stop Till we do just like him He won't stop, hey, he won't stop Till the church looks like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till we do just like him God is raising mighty men in his name God is building a mighty army in this day. He won't stop, he won't stop, till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop, till the church looks like him. Listen, next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen. Don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen. When God can find a man and find a people, he will do mighty things. He told Jeremiah, don't say I am young. Don't say I am a child. I will put my, my words in your mouth. You will subdue, you will tear down, and you will rebuild. Hallelujah. Tonight I came to challenge you. Babylon is falling. What you are seeing in the TV is falling. The old wine has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church is rising. Watch this. Nigeria, I told you, I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God. But Nigeria as a continent, this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me. There are some things that if they don't happen this year, the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming? It is beyond human. It's an agenda. It's the attacking of the firstborn of God. But God is always one step ahead. When you see the church pray and we speak, don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening. There is much that is being done in the kingdom. Have you heard what I'm saying? When the dust settles, you will see a victorious church. He said, I will build. I will supervise that this church stands. I will build my church. For the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment. Look at me. One man cannot do this alone. One church, one ministry cannot do this. It takes a people who will say, Lord, we understand. Lord, we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost. There are many of us here. Your stand with God is not straight. We don't even know where you stand. As occasion serves. When in Rome, behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil. It's as simple as that. 
For you to be part of this army, your allegiance must not be confused. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? The gates will ask you. My brother, it's not all about business. They will trap you in that oil company. Where do you stand? You must answer the question. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? When you declare where you stand, and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to. As for me, I've made a decision. Thank God I'm going to be a father. From the womb. You know how John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Many men are not responsible. If your father here, God is speaking to you. Take charge. There are many homes. You pray when there's trouble. If they don't pay the man three months, I say, okay, children, let's come together and pray. Say, let's pray because what God, the attack coming to this family. And you don't take your place. Right? Watch this. Forget about the flamboyancy you see on TV. Babylon is falling. It's a prophecy. Babylon is falling. And your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom. Go to your territory. Do you know how Satan is ravaging our homes? There are people in our homes with terminal diseases. You are watching them. Take that authority and that anointing. If nobody has told you you are anointed, I'm telling you this night, you are anointed. Do you know how things went bad in my family? I heard about I heard about the things that surrounded my bed. And I said, Satan, you will pay for it. Ah! You will pay for it. Are you still afraid of the devil? Or should he begin to be afraid of you? I told you it's an old story. Satan is not the opposite of God. There was a day he was not existing. Satan has an exact creation date. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The strength of evil is deception. When you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory, you will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain, just a guy, this pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should do? Look, I told you, take this word. Whatever goes wrong in your life, say for this purpose, for this purpose, was the Son of God made manifest that He may what? Destroy. 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 The church is the representation of the victory of Christ. The church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy. The church is the hallmark the symbol of the wisdom of God. And we cannot fail. There is a generation that must not fail. We are going to pray. Look, you must, you must tell God, I am available. I am available. Some of you, God is calling you from your slumber. Your spiritual slumber. Ladies, God is calling you. Forget about that allergy and concentrate on God. Allergy gives you one million, you insulted God. God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch Him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you. You know, gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? I see this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, Talk. His grace is of it. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm asking why is this? You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system. Because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man. Right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's our year of the rain. 
the kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion, my contribution to see His kingdom come. And that love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I say no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covenant. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking. That's not all. Two, the happiness will die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there are, there are, there are madmen and there are madmen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody send a text. He says it's so accident. I me, hey. It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched scenes where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? Or somebody with a, a communicable disease. I've been doing this for years. My body is as healthy as a baby's body. Healthy as a baby's body. There is the reality of another life. That when it's at work in you, it will turn you into a superhuman. Hallelujah. Rise up, we are going to pray. I want us to insist on some things in the spirit. Please take this prayer session seriously. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. And say, Lord, I declare, I pledge my eternity allegiance to you from today there's no going back there's no bending lift your voice and pray you are the lord of my life there's no confusion about it what shall separate us from the love of god in the secret and in the open i love you i belong to your government there's no confusion about it. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. Pray. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government. My word under the influence of your government. Pray. Take 
Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be, you declare, I've been called out of every tribe. Hear me. Every tongue. Listen. Don't let yourself to be a victim of where you are called. You did choose it. Don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. You came from this so there is a cost upon your life and there is no way out prophesy with violence in your spirit have been called out of every tribe every tongue i challenge every power that is not of god oh i'm anointed I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as a representative, called out of every cause, called out of every covenant, called out of every ordinance. He make the angels win and his ministers flame for fire. I have no business with the ordinances of the Father, with the ordinances of witchcraft. I willingly, I choose this day that I serve the King. I choose this day that my allegiance is to cry of it. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is, as it is right now, there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by His name. And cause it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure. That pattern of loss. That pattern of addiction. That pattern of masturbation. That pattern of immorality. I cause you by the God of heaven. I cause you by the name that is above every Pray. Pray out. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Way out. I break the pattern. I love Jesus. I challenge the forces of darkness. I travel by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The Lord shines for my family. The Lord shines for me. I cannot go down. No way. There is a Spirit of God. Call it by name, call it by name, call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt 
command victory. Establish victory. In pain. Establish victory. In the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador to carry a peace. Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven above His knees Some power and might Sing it from your heart in the song of victory Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven I tell you, you will come out the champion. No power will keep you. You are an into two. You are going to release prophecy upon that person. Listen. 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 The Bible says where the word of a king is there is power. Where the word of a king is there is power. Hallelujah. I like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother. As if you are praying for your sister. Prophesy. Open the fountains of blessings. Open the fountains of grace. Come on now. Koinonia pray. I call you blessed. I strengthen your feet. Your season of the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it God. Even God who quickened at the death and calls for the things that be not as though they were. Prophesy. I call for that in your life. I call life passion. I call it God. I call it God upon the third dimension of wealth and abundance. Supernatural doors. Open doors. New levels of revelation. New levels of... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. We are going to pray. The election is by the corner. We are going to pray. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Zaria is our Jerusalem. We are going to speak to the borders of this city. We stay the hands of evil. The hands of bloodshed. You will not cross the circumference of this city. We hold the keys of this city. And we drive out every devil. Come on pray. It's your Jerusalem. There will be peace upon our walls, peace upon our borders. Shalom Zaria, Shalom Zaria. We pray upon the borders of this city, the north to the south. We command peace, Shalom, Shalom. Nothing missing. We drive out every power. We drive out every force. We take charge of the heavenly. We take charge. No death. No blood. No blood death. In the name of 
cannot play the government of God, the institution, the authorities of God is playing. Hallelujah. Now we are going to pray. I feel sorry for those who say Nigeria will divide. They don't know the mystery of our creation. Go and read Isaiah 18. When you see the representation of Nigeria in Isaiah 18, you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation. Are you ready to pray? You are going to pray to every border. First, the joy of family. I'm not hearing bad news. It's, it's not no 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 refuse it and pray spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation go ahead and pray we legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom we command it in the name of jesus in abuja in kaduna in george in makodi in Kodiste, in Potankot. Command, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our nation. Even in the forthcoming election, let there be peace. Let there be peace by the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Remember your best for no God. Remember she that you died for. Remember your best for no God. For God and for God. We pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our family. For spread the token of Maya. Turn the wisdom backward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we are going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life. And you are going to pray. There are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our life. It's time to challenge it right now. You are going to speak. Whatever area, mention it. And speak. If it's marriage, say it. It must happen. If it's your finances, pray. The wisdom, the strategy, the grace. Lift your voice and pray. From glory to glory. Hello, welcome in this Jehovah Shalom, 
Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to begin to walk with this consciousness. I am part of the ecclesia. There is only one way the counsel of God can happen in the earth. The church. Only. There are not many options. The church is the strategy. The church is the force that will conquer Babylon. So I want you to know that whatever it takes for God to demonstrate his might in the church, he will do it. He will do it for his name's sake. He will do it for his name's sake. Walk in that consciousness. It pays God in every way to bring breakthrough to your family. It pays God in every way to make his word come to pass in your life. The question is to what degree are you willing to partner with him? Both in principle and in prayer. Hallelujah. I made up my mind that in my life and in my time, the counsel of God must come to pass fully. 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 Hallelujah. There are people here, before I just pray for all of us, there are people here right now, you have a desire to live for God and to serve God, but as it is, you are still operating in the government of the Antichrist. And God is calling you to make your ways right. And in a very unambiguous way, declare your allegiance. He said, choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. It is within your power. You may not be able to change your life by yourself, but you can make that decision. There are people inside and outside right now. Hallelujah. And as I make this call, I want you to find your way and come. It's our joy and pleasure to welcome you. The victorious family because Babylon is falling. I guarantee you Babylon is falling. Every system that is not of God will fail. When all is said and done, Christ will still be seated upon his throne as the king. And the church will stand victoriously. Wherever you are, you need to make it right with God or rededicate your life. Make your way to the front right now. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody inside and outside. It's time to declare your allegiance. Choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Whom you will serve. He said, but as for me and my house. As for me and my house. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let the devil cheat you win that war of destiny. It's time to make it right. For God so loved you, He gave His one and only begotten Son. No matter what you have done, no matter what the story is, make your way. Make your way and let Him give you a new beginning. No matter how far, keep coming. Koinonia celebrate them. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. That's what you're here to declare. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, oh yes, Lord. When you come to Jesus, part of what happens to you is He supplies the grace. You cannot help yourself, but you can choose to authorize into your life. Now look up, please. Don't be emotional about the decision you are making because it's a serious decision. Are you getting me? As I lead you through this prayer, I want you to know that grace will be supplied. 
lift your right hand high to heaven and say after me from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a point say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I declare that I believe in you tonight I have heard your word and I declare that there be a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and my King from now and henceforth I denounce sin and Satan I denounce the way of the flesh and I declare that Jesus is my Lord now let me pray for you Father see these hands that are lifted a public declaration of their allegiance to your government this is why you died I pray that you supply upon them the grace it will take to live victorious I cause the power of sin over your life in the name of Jesus may you join this great army that will crumble Babylon may you join this great army that will be envoys of his presence may you join this great army that will be witnesses for his majesty that at the end of your life may he say well done good and faithful servant i pray for you that everything that lures you to the way of the world grace is supplied upon you in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus amen and amen thank you
need a call There is a need for someone to go and save the land I have a call and I see the need But I don't feel strong enough for this But the kingdoms of the world Can become the kingdoms of the Lord So take me, break me Fix me, Lord, and make me ready to go Become the kingdoms of the Lord So take me, break me Like your battle axe, Lord, sharpen my edges and make me useful for you, so I can be ready to go, baby. ready to go. again later on. Ready to go. It's a very powerful. If you've not heard it, you can get it from him or the media people after the meeting. Powerful single. Musically sound. Prophetically sound. This is what we're releasing. Songs of the Spirit. Kabbalah. 
I just sense that that is the song that describes what I'm about to teach tonight. We're rounding up the series and we'll pray tonight. Verse 20. Hallelujah. Want to read? For with thee I will break in pieces the nations. And with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Verse 21. And with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariots and his rider. Lord, speak to us tonight. We're ready to go. Ready to go. We're ready to go. There is a call. There is a need. For someone to go and take the land. I have the call and we see the need. But we don't feel strong enough for this. But the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of the Lord. So take us, break us. Break us and make us ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Lord, we declare that we are available. As prophecy draws near. And that which has been spoken from the mouth of the prophets cries for fulfillment. We declare that you find the people ready to go. In the name of Jesus, sharpen us, O God. Let our tears not stop you. Let our limitations and the pain that comes with wearing this flesh not stop us. We pray that you advance in your dealings in our lives until we become an object of praise. Your battle acts in thee. We give you the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Walk to ten people and tell them I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. started a series called the Imagines, a series that attempts to prepare us for the inevitable manifestation of the church. We have seen the signs and we have read the writings on the wall that the season is near. We are more than ever before in the heart of prophecy as a congregation of God's people. And it is very important, as you will be learning today, that there will be a sharpening, a dealing volume, please. There will be a building of the Spirit. And this is my passion. God is going somewhere with us as we travel around this nation, strengthening the body of Christ and contributing our quota to the building of this army, I see how possible this prophecy is. Day in, day out, week in, week out, I see that the Spirit of God is strong upon this nation. Hallelujah. And we will not fail Him. Hallelujah. I assure you that the church will not fail because Christ Himself will build the church. Hallelujah. So we spoke first and foremost about the prophecy. How that there is a prophecy upon the church. Many prophecies scattered in scripture. How that there will be an emergence of the body of Christ. And um, Micah chapter 4 talks about 
the mountain of the Lord being lifted above every other mountain. Obadiah 1 21 says, Saviors shall arise from Zion and they will judge the mount of Esau. Hallelujah. Revelation 10 begins to tell us how that the kingdoms of this world where this song is. I think that this should be the, the theme song for this, this series. Hallelujah. And so there is a prophecy upon the church. A prophecy that announces the emergence of the church and the inevitable doom of Babylon. Last week we considered Babylon, the concept of the Antichrist system. Please listen to me. I want you to pay attention to this series because it represents the foundation of what the church is alive for right now. There are certain messages that if a preacher is not preaching in this day and in this season, it is a sign that he is not in touch with spiritual reality. Hallelujah. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. So we are not just bringing this as a... Can you help us? We are not just bringing this as a... a teaching just to keep time going. It is very prophetic. I want to do a quick recap on last week's message. I'll try to be as simple because the goal is understanding. Not just to impress you with revelations. I want us to understand. This is the heart of the contention of the Christian faith. Please let me have two people. No, don't worry, Pastor Femi. You can see now. Any two people. One here, one here. God bless you. Hallelujah. The entire scope of the Christian experience is about the contention of two kingdoms, two governments, two entities. And humanity is the object of attention. On one side, there is a creator who is at the same time a king and a loving father who has manipulated history and has orchestrated eternity according to his predeterminate counsel. And there is a kingdom, a system, a government, an agenda, a strategy masterminded by this entity once called Lucifer. One who has made himself the arch enemy of the agenda of God. Are you following what I'm saying now? And humanity through civilization and as we have evolved as sociological beings have been shrouded from the reality that all there is to the existence of mankind as far as our dispensation is attempting to define is who truly owns the allegiance of mankind. Are you getting what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how many years you spend educating yourself. It doesn't matter any other thing you do. This is the prime, the apex of this. God committed all of his authority and his glory to one of these men. So that through dominion and reproduction, the influence of his government will fill this territory of his kingdom. And by treason and deception, man through the woman handed the authority, the government, the authority to order and structure the earth to Satan, Lucifer. And on the strength of that authority, he has gone to cause havoc upon the nations. It is for this purpose that Jesus came. He didn't just come to take us to heaven. He didn't just come to birth a religion. He didn't just come to make us Christians. He came as a...